Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to do the total physical response. I'm going to cover the introduction to TPR, that is total physical response, the characteristics of TPR, its application, the basic principles behind this method, some of the advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to tell you the difference between the traditional method and TPR. So the objective of this lecture is that by the end of the lecture, you will be able to analyze the difference between traditional method and TPR, and you will be able to apply this in your classes. Now, let's talk about its background. Basically, TPR is a method that is developed by Dr. James Usher in uh, 1977. He was a professor of psychology at St. John's State University of California. Usher developed TPR as a result of his experience observing young children learning their first language. He noticed that interaction between parents and children often took the form of the speech from the parent, followed by a physical response from the child. As we must have observed, every one of us have observed that the child learn a language when the elders are actually speaking and doing the things, right? We showed some kind of action and then we speak at, at the same time. This is how the children learn that this is what it means, okay? And they learn that is speech uh, vocabulary. Asher made three hypotheses based on this observation. First, that the language is learned primarily by listening. So on the basis of this observation, that is the children followed the parents through their physical responses and the speech altogether. So he, the first, uh, observation the hypothesis was that the language is learned primarily by listening. Second, that language learning must engage the right hemisphere of the brain. When we talk about the language learning, then usually the right hemisphere is responsible for learning the language. So it means the right hemisphere should be activated. And this can all, only be activated when the body is, uh, I mean, when there is physically bodies involved in some action. That's why right hemisphere is involved. And third, that learning language should not involve any stress. If there is any stress, then obviously anxiety level will be high and that will hinder the language learning or any kind of learning. So that's why another important hypothesis is that language learning should not involve any stress, it means it should be relaxing and enjoyable uh, experience. <clears throat> Now, on the basis of this hypothesis, he has presented this method that is TPR. Now, what is TPR? TPR is total physical response, which is a lang language teaching method built around the coordination of a speech and action. It attempts to teach language through physical activity. Physical activity, in physical activities, usually the motor neurons are active. Okay, Our, uh, physical yani body movement, if you are moving your hands, it means your motor neurons, motor neurons are the neurons which uh, send the message, the neurons which send the message to your brain, those are known as motor neuron. So physical activity involves motor neurons, so that your uh, message is sent to the brain and it will become more active. So in TPR, instructor give commands to the students in the target language and the students respond with whole body action. Okay, so total physical response is often used alongside other methods and techniques. As we have discussed in the class as well, uh, when I was giving the demo that uh, through this method, only physical uh, vocabulary can be learned, right? Abstract ideas, abstract no notions, feelings cannot be covered in this, uh, through this method. That's why it is used along with other methods. We have uh, discussed five methods up till now, before this TPR, this is the sixth one. So uh, this method is used along with some other method. This alone cannot be used in the class in order to uh, teach the language, any language. It is popular with beginners and with young learners, although it can be used with the students of all levels and all groups. So it can be used with every kind of uh, level, but usually it is popular with the beginners and the young learners. So because they enjoy learning through this method with the movement of the body. <clears throat> now, first of all, look at this picture. These two men are folding their arms uh, at the back and so the child is looking at them and doing the same right so a child listen watch and then it imitates right so this is the main idea behind this method 
So main characteristic of the TPR includes the coordination of the speech and action. When the speech and action works together, then uh, this method, uh, you can say this method is because of the speech and the action. Learner's role of listeners and performers. Learner role is basically to listen to what the teacher is saying and perform, or you can say imitate what the teacher is doing or saying. Learners monitor and evaluate their own progress, right? If they have forgot uh, what the teacher want them to do, like koi vocabulary kahi or student ko nahi samaj mara ke kya karna hai, they look uh, towards other students, right? Because all the students are doing the same, so they get help from each other and they evaluate their own progress. Ke achha, mujhe kitna yaad hua hai, kitni vocabulary mujhe samaj mara hai. Now, reading and writing is taught after grammar and vocabulary. Okay, so basic, the first thing in this method is the teachings of grammar and vocabulary. Vocabulary items are taught and then through this vocabulary, sentence structure or the grammar part is focused. Short words and then, uh, I mean words, then phrases and then sentences are focused. Okay, so it means the first uh, focus is on the vocabulary, then grammar and then reading and writing. Grammar is taught inductively. Inductively means it is practice first and then the rules are taught later on. Traditionally, we do this, we tell the rules first, the grammar, the tenses, the rules, and then we practice. But it is not like this. It is practiced first and the rules are taught later on. Grammar and vocabulary selected according to the situation. Okay, situation is created in this method and then all the vocabulary and the grammar is selected according to that situation. Koi bhi situation ho sakti hai, jo class mein create ki jati hai. Learning language by gestures, that is body movement. The teacher and the students are the actors. The students should be more active and talkative. Okay, so that they can learn in a better way. Okay, jab, when they are active and they are talkative, it means their right hemisphere will become more, uh, I mean, active, right? And because of that, learning will take place. So you can say that they are motor students because their motor neurons are very active at that time. Now the application of TPR. <clears throat> if we talk about these four things, that is reading, writing, vocabulary, and structure, how can these be uh, applied in the class? Let's see. For reading, predicting skills and reading the text. Reading text is also possible. Writing, ke liye, you can ask them to make dialogues or pictures. And uh, you can even give them pictures. And then you can ask them to write dialogues related with that pictures. Uh, if you talk about vocabulary, then reality, demonstration, and conversation can be done. Physical responses are uh, taught along with vocabulary in order to explain the vocabulary items. And then the structure also involved uh, reality and demonstration. Now you can see this picture. It means learning keywords, understanding sentences, listening to the instructions and imitating actions. This is the main application of the method in a classroom where there are young children. Now let's talk about the basic principles of TPR. Listening ability and vocabulary must be developed first, which I've mentioned in the last slide as well. There must be no stress in the class. Regular repetition of the movement, regular repetition of the actions of the vocabulary. This is how this principle of uh, TPR works, right? If repetition is going on, it means the students will easily learn that vocabulary. Action verbs are the core of TPR. Okay? Only action verbs can be covered here, right? Uh, words or verb, action verbs, which involve some kind of action, which involves some kind of uh, movement of uh, the body. TPR is also a technique of teaching vocabulary. No forcing, but exploit the student's error for exposing other structure points. Okay, if so if the students are wrong, if they have made any error, uh, the teacher is not supposed to force them to speak the right thing, right? Only the correct structure point is taught, uh, I mean, repeated in front of them so that they can use the correct form rather than pointing them out that they have spoken anything wrong and they're not forced to say anything correctly. 
they will learn automatically <clears throat> next point says that expose a natural use of language natural use of language means the language that is uh, used in the daily life okay create an artificial english community in the classroom right for because uh, um, artificial english community or you can say the target language community jo bhi aapki target language aap uh, teach karna cha rahe hain you have to create that community so that students can learn uh, in that way the more often we trace memory and the more intensely we repeat the stronger the memory association are and the more likely it will be recalled okay so it means when repetition will uh, be carried out when it will uh, students will repeat again and again they will memorize those thing and they will try to associate those words and they can easily recall them in their daily life now talking about the advantages of tpr it is fun easy and memorable it is a good tool for building vocabulary it can facilitate students with the meaning in real context it does not require a great deal of preparation helps the students immediately understand the target language tpr is inclusive and works well a class with mixed ability uh, levels okay so you can see the advantages uh, basically it is you can say a very enjoyable method it can be uh, learned by mix ability learners mix ability learners means uh, they can be uh, very intelligent students they can be average students or uh, the weak students as well right but it will work the same for all because all of them will do the same thing koi bhi isme ye nahi hai ki koi nahi kar raha hoga ya nahi seekh raha hoga all of them will be at the equal level level helps learners achieve fluency faster in learning language this is because their uh, brain right hemisphere is active motor neurons are active that's why students will learn the language faster it benefits the struggling students struggling students or you can say jo hamare yahan kaha jata hai weak students jo bechare zara mushkil se learn karte hain language ya koi bhi cheez so it will be benefit for them because they will learn along with the help of other students right and it create positive thinking positive thinking in the way that all of uh, all the students will uh, have a feeling of helping each other right having a coordination cooperation with each other so these were some of the advantages of tpr now okay now the disadvantages of tpr students are not generally given the opportunity to express their own thoughts in a creative way ठीक है ओनली दोकेबलरी और दू कैन से देंटेंसेज दैट आर टॉट बाय द टीचर विल ओनली बी फोकस इन द क्लास स्टूडेंट विल ओनली फोकस और प्रैक्टिस दैट पर्टिकुलर एक्सप्रेशन और द थॉट राइट दे आर नॉट सपोज टू यूज एनी अदर ऑफ देयर ओन right so it can be challenge for a shy students shy students will face problem in this case because dekhiye humne baat ki thi ki weak weak students ya struggling students ke liye the problem nahi hai ki wo support mil jayegi lekin shy students those who don't want to be involved in the classroom in their any kind of physical activity right so it will be a challenge for them it is not a very creative method creative method in the sense that only few things will be focused here that's why over using tpr causes someone easily bored repeat repeat for example repetition of the same item repetition of the same uh, physical actions will obviously uh, be boring for some of the students and they might feel tired as well right so certain target languages may not be suited to this method there are some target languages which doesn't involve any action verbs or where there are very less action verbs right so it it is difficult to teach these uh, such languages it is limited since everything cannot be explained with this method as i have mentioned earlier that uh, feelings or thoughts or abstract ideas or notions cannot be taught through this method that's why it is very really limited now this is an important thing if we <clears throat> try to make a uh, i mean comparison between the traditional methods and the tpr traditional method here i mean uh, the direct method and gtm 
right? And so GTM and target method are compared with the TPR. <clears throat> Basically, in this traditional method, that is GTM in uh, direct method, it was teacher centered. Here, it is more student centered. At that time, too much spoon feeding was there. Here, active learning is taking place by the students. The traditional method was non-communicative because only the teacher was saying and the students were only repeating the same thing. They were not communicating with each other. Here in TPR, it is plurally communicative, means students are communicating with the teacher as well and with the peer students as well. This uh, traditional method neglects students' creativity, whereas TPR method stress on students' creativity. Traditional method output is more than input. Okay, so producing uh, the same thing is important in traditional method, whereas CPR input must be used as a best of creativity. So in this case, uh, means creative creativity is there. Students also focus on the creativity. Teacher is also trying to uh, present the language in a creative way so that they can learn easily, and it will be more enjoyable method. Now, in traditional method, error was considered as a sin. It means that it was negative. Ho gaya. Whereas in TPR, error is a part of studying. No problem if the students have made any error. So easily, uh, it can be corrected, right? Without making students feel bad about it. The traditional methods were very threatening because it was teacher centered. There was pin drop silence and students were really afraid to speak anything in the class. Whereas in TPR, it is more relaxing and non-frightening method. The students are feeling relaxed. They're enjoying this, uh, learning a language and having discussion with the teacher and the peer, uh, peers. <clears throat> traditional method, in traditional method, the teacher explains everything. Whereas over here, the te teacher gives motivation and encouragement. Okay, the students will learn the language themselves by the actions. Here, the teacher is supposed to explain everything. But here, through the motions, through the actions, the students can easily understand. So a teacher is only giving the motivation and the encouragement to the students. In traditional methods, sometimes the teacher explanation is not clear. Whereas in TPR, the teacher's role as a stage manager. Okay, so if uh, traditional method mein teachers ki koi explanation clear nahi hi hai, to unse na koi push sakta hai, na kuch, uh, question kar sakta, na kuch bol sakta hai. Uh, so it's it's uh, I mean they will be hanging somewhere in between learning the language. Whereas over here, the teacher role is as a stage manager. So teacher is there to guide them, to control them at every point and at every uh, situation and every condition. Here the students are learners in traditional method students are listeners, sorry, listeners, whereas over here in TPR, the students are actors and actress. Actors and actresses. Okay, now Finally, the conclusion of this method is that TPR is one of the teaching methods that emphasize action learnings through active learning through actions. It means that learners speaking a skill through listening to their teacher and before requiring them to speak and asking them to practice using verbal communication accompanied by physical action. So basically, it means that learners speaking a skill is involved through listening by the teacher and before they acquire the speaking they are asked to practice those uh, verbal communication uh, vocabulary by the actions by their physical actions three basic steps that are used in this method are listen watch and imitate and this happens immediately and repeatedly okay this is how they learn visualize see it auditory listen to it and then do it listen watch and imitate okay so this was all about tpr that's all for tpr thank you